All right, another example of using quadratic functions to solve problems. In this particular problem, we're looking at a rancher who's going to build a couple corrals. They're going to be adjacent to each other, and dude's going to be using 200 feet of fencing to create two corrals that would look something like this. Now, the first thing I need to do is make sure I know what I'm looking for. I'm trying to find a way to write the area dependent on what I choose x to be. So x is chosen as what seems to be the length of one of the corrals. And apparently I can choose however long I want to make that, and that's going to determine what the area of that corral is going to be. Uh, once I have that equation, I'll probably be able to do the rest of these. For example, I can use create a table of values, so I can kind of guess and check and see what values of x are uh, changing. Sorry, see how changes in the values of x will affect the area, um, and then maybe find out where the maximum is before I even do anything in part C, which part C says, use the area function to determine the maximum area and the dimensions of the corral that would produce that maximum area. So that's that finding the vertex kind of question, and then use technology to support your results. So now I know where I'm headed. First thing I'm going to do is draw a better picture. I'm going to draw a top view so I can get a better sense of what's going on. Second thing I should always do is define my variables. I have to know what my variables are before I can start writing equations with them. The important thing to recognize here is even though the rancher is building two adjacent corrals, I only need to find the area of one corral. And that's an important distinction because it could affect your results if you uh, think about this problem as if we're finding the area of the entire rectangle. That is not true. I'm just looking for the area of one of these two corrals, which will be identical. So that's why, where um, when I define my variables, I can make sure that the reader knows exactly what I mean when I say A, and when I talk about area, what exactly am I talking about. So be specific when you define your variables, and include the labels too, it's really helpful. So now the part about getting the equation. It just says express area as a function of x. That's, I don't think I can just sit here and just automatically rattle off an equation. I think I need to understand the problem a little bit deeper before I can do that. So that's where you get into this idea called specializing. Here's the one thing I do know before I specialize. I know that if I take the length times the width or the x times the y dimensions, that will be the area of one of the corrals. That's not what I'm looking for because I need to have area as a function of x. Here I have area as a function of x and y. And so I need to express y in terms of x in order to be able to, do, uh, to get the equation I'm looking for. So I don't know where to start. So I'm just going to basically design corrals where the length of each side is 10 and see what happens in terms of what, what is the area of these pens going to be. Now in order for me to figure out the area, I need to know how wide these pens are going to be. And so I have to start with figuring out that I've used up 40 feet of the horizontal fencing. If I subtract 40, that's going to give me 160 feet left over for all three of these sides. So if there's 160 feet for all three of these sides, then one of these sides is going to be one-third of that number. In other words, if I take that 160, divide by 3, that gives me the y dimension. Now I have enough to calculate the area, and the area is going to be 10 times 53 and a third, or 533 and one-third square feet. It's going to be a very narrow pen because it's 10 feet by 50 feet. So it's not going to be a very good shaped corral, and it doesn't look like it's going to hold the optimal area. So I pick a different one. I don't want A to be 10. I've already used that up, so I'm going to change that to 20. And so all of these were 10. Now they're going to be 20. It should change the shape, but in the interest of time, I kept it just for labels' sake. But if I use 20 for each pen, then I've used a 1, 2, 3, 4 size length of 20. In other words, I've used up a total of 80 feet of fencing. Then I can figure out that there's 120 feet of fence left over for the, the Y sides. If I take that 120 and divide it by 2 or 3, then I get 40 feet. So we're talking about 20 feet by 40 feet, or a total of 800 square feet um, of pen. So clearly, making uh, the... Um, X is twice as long, has an effect of increasing my area by um, about 270 square feet, which is considerable. But what else I learned here um, is I can replace X with any number I want, including mm, unknown number X. And look at the math, it's going to be exactly the same. Instead of 40, we have 4 times X feet of fence used up horizontally, which means instead of... Um, 200 minus 40, it's going to be 200 minus 4x. That's the feet of vertical fence left over. 
and then 200 minus 4x divided by 3 is the y value. So what I have right here is y written in terms of x. So instead of having y as just y, y can now be represented as 200 minus 4x over 3. It's called substitution. So when I have area equals x times y, I really have area equals uh, x times 200 minus 4x over 3. It doesn't look like much, but if I um, do some cosmetics here by distributing the x and then distributing the one-third, I now have a quadratic function. And the good news is, I can use the work that I did earlier to help me with part B, which is using the equation to get the, uh, the areas. Now what I should do before I go any further is verify that if x equals 10, does y equal 50, 533 and 1 third. So you substitute 10 into here and here and see if that actually works out, because then you know your equation is right because it's consistent with what we did when we specialized. Anyway, this is now 800 for 20, which is another piece of data that I collected. And um, now I'm just going to go extend the table one further and substitute 30 for x. So the equation says we're going to have an area of 800 square feet, which is the same area as when I made x equal to 20. It's interesting. Now I know this is a quadratic function, which means it's going to be parabolic, and I know it's going to open down. So it seems to me that if we're going to find a maximum area, we're going to have to choose x to be between 20 and 30. And in fact, given the symmetry, I'm guessing 25 right off the bat. Now all I have to do is use my equation to verify it. So the maximum area occurs at the axis of symmetry. So I just find the b and the a values and multiply top and bottom by 3 to get a nice clean fraction. And sure enough, 25 feet, just like I said. Then I evaluate A of 25 to find the area, maximum area, and that's 833 and a third. This is bigger than 800, so I know it's maximum, and it's not much bigger, so it's all consistent with what I know about parabolas. Make sure I answer the question. It said the dimensions of the corral. So I need to know not the area, but the dimensions. So in other words, make the pen or corral 25 by 33 and a third feet to get the maximum area of 833 and one third square feet. So this is how big the pen should be. This would be 25 and 25, and this would be 33 and a third, and 33 and a third, 33 and a third. So that way you'd get the largest possible configuration for this geometry. Lastly, it did say support your work using graphing calculator. I use Desmos for the software because it's easier um, to get to and to, debit, to display for you all. But sure enough, 25 and 833 and a third is the maximum area. Here's 30, 800, which is what I found by hand. And I also had a table over here to show that 20, 800, and 10, 533 and a third are consistent with what I did when I specialized. So uh, this technology piece is the best part because it makes sure that all of this hard work that I put in um, pays off. I mean, that's a, that's a lot of work to put into finding an equation. Um, and it's nice to know in the end that you found the right equation that you used it correctly. So thank you. Enjoy your, um, your life. Have a good day.